Holy crap, guys, it's 10 degrees and it's almost March. Crazy weather right now. We've done videos about why you maybe shouldn't want to move to North Idaho. Well, Lexi, Cody, Ben, and myself are gonna wrap up today why you might, maybe you should move to North Idaho. If this is for you, if you like the cold, if you like ever-changing weather, North Idaho may be for you. So we're gonna run down the top 10 reasons you should move to North Idaho, so stay tuned. Hey, what's happening guys? Connor Hammonds with the Living CDA Realty Group, brokered by eXp. Today we got Lexi, Cody, Ben, and myself. And we're gonna talk a little bit about, you know, reasons maybe you should move to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Personal preferences on what we enjoy about the area. Dig into the top 10 reasons we love living here. And hey, they might coincide with why you might wanna live here as well. So uh, as you know, we do videos all year round. So tap that subscribe button, click the bell. Um, so you get notified every time we do a new video about what it's like to live, work, and play here in North Idaho. We help people all year round move, and we absolutely love working with you. So um, reach out to us. We can't help you if we don't know how to contact you. So uh, send us a text, give us a call, shoot us an email. However you got to get a hold of us, get a hold of us because we love uh, working with you. So let's kick it off top 10 reasons you should move to Coeur d'Alene Idaho and top 10 reasons really why we love living here mm -hmm. um not just Coeur d'Alene but North Idaho in general uh Ben do you want to kick off yeah. number one I'll start in the reason number one I'm going to choose that I actually enjoy li living here is that there's four very distinct and separate seasons uh in the area so uh, you definitely don't get bored of any particular season, that's for sure. Uh, our winters have a lot of snow, can the temperature can fall, you know, right now it's pretty cold out, right? At this current time, spring has a lot of rain, uh, comfortable temperatures at that time. In the summer, we enjoy super hot weather at some points. Last year, we got into the hundreds, but um, we pretty can- Pretty dry too. Pretty dry, um, utilize the lake in that time quite a bit. Fall is my favorite season. All the trees turn colors, very comfortable temperatures. Uh, the smells and everything are just incredible at that time. Um, and then I talked a little bit about the winter. So, you know, certain places, you know, uh, Arizona, for example, you know, it might be, you, you won't ever see snow. You won't see those uh, seasons where they rain um, or the temperature gets down into the 60s, 70s, or if it does, it's very short lived um, and it never gets to the point where you really need to get out of town. So um, that's reason number one for me. Yeah, the joke is like, uh, I'm sure everyone's heard it before if you've watched videos. If you don't like the weather in North Idaho, wait 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons I love it too. It's because you always have something to look forward to. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, if you if you start getting tired of one sort of temperature, you're like, well, falls around the corner. Yeah. And uh, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, number two and that's gonna go with, uh, I'll, I'll kick it off, it's golf. I'm a golf junkie. Um, we don't have a, a super long golf season up here in North Idaho, but when we do, it's glorious, you know, from April through October, um, just amazing. Uh, you know, early season, spring, you gotta, you gotta be a kind of a warrior in terms of uh, playing through some rain and some cold. Uh, but definitely when you hit June, July, and August, and even into September, we have really beautiful Septembers. Um, those are great times to play golf. One of the unique features about our area is the golf courses here. We have a lot of public courses, and for a lot of clients I help or friends that move into the area, they just are shocked at how affordable it is to play around, where um, it depends on where you come from, but you know you can play around a golf here at beautiful golf courses for 40 bucks. Um, and 60 bucks maybe with a cart. Uh, so I play at the resort quite a bit. It's one of those, you know, icon type of uh, golf courses in the area. It has the floating green. So I'm always looking for an excuse to play. So whenever anyone has friends who want to play, just say, you know, try and get on there. I'm happy to, to golf with you. So reach out. Golf is definitely one of my, my main reasons. And that's number two. Number three. Number three. Uh, number three for our family is definitely skiing and snowboarding. So 
Uh, I grew up skiing mostly at Silver Mountain, Summit, Schweitzer, um, but really there are five different mountains that you can visit in our area within like an hour and a half, which is awesome. Um, Schweitzer is probably the biggest mountain. It has the most runs and the best, um, it, I think it's the best mountain, but it's also known for maybe a little bit more fog than Silver mm -hmm. Mountain. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, right on the Idaho-Montana border is Lookout and you can literally drive right up to the bottom of Lookout, um, right off the freeway, it's super easy. And it's more of kind of your mom and pop small town uh, resort, or not resort, uh, ski ski hill. Yep. Um, Schweitzer has a ton of growth and is- um, Big lodge. Yes, just brand new, mm -hmm. um, uh, just went in, uh, hotel, sorry, mm -hmm. I couldn't think of the word. Um, they're also building a lot of condos up there. Um, I've heard rumors waiting in the lift line that maybe someday there's gonna be a gondola mm -hmm. and a new, uh, lodge down below. Oh, I don't know. Amazing. I mean, it yeah. was literally just people talking. To them. <laughs> like, so who knows? But um, there is one in Silver or Silver Mountain. <laughs> there is, and the yeah. other cool thing at Silver Mountain is there's a water park, mm -hmm. um, an indoor water park at the base. So I used to bribe my kids when they were little. If they <laughs> let me <laughs> ski for the day, then I would take them to the water park at night. <laughs> yeah. um, it's actually really fun, and that's an easy gondola ride. You get right off the freeway, park at the bottom, and then ride the gondola up. And the other cool thing is in the summer. You can also ride your bike, uh, mountain bike at most of the resorts, totally. and there's tons of cool trails and things to do in the summer. Um, so number two or three, we're on three. Number three, yep. Definitely skiing. And I was up just at Lookout with Rowan last weekend, and it it was crazy because I, I talked to a, someone who's recently moved here, um, just a parent on on his basketball team, and, and they went to Lookout, and they're like, everyone said it was so crowded, but we like you didn't have to wait past like three minutes on a lift line. Mm -hmm. And it was, it's true. Like the whole parking lot was crowded in terms of, they just don't have a big enough parking lot. Right. But then once we got up on the ski hill, it was just like, you could do run after run. It wasn't bad at all. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty unique. Yeah. I was up at Schweitzer last weekend and it was president's day weekend, which is like one of the busiest weekends they have. And the lines are long, but it moves really fast mm -hmm. and the backside is yeah perfect. So cool. Number four, kick it off. Yeah, number four. So number four for, for me and my family, we, we really love the uh, lake life around here. You know, you wouldn't have Coeur d'Alene without Coeur d'Alene Lake. Um, so that's that's a big motivation, I know, for a lot of people that move here. Um, but we also have a lot more options. So we've got Hauser Lake, we've got Hayden Lake, um, Fernand's a smaller lake. Um, then you have um, Pend Oreille in Sandpoint, which is about 15, or I mean about 50 miles away. Um, and then, you know, the other lakes are all within 15, 20 minutes. And then Twin Lakes as well, mm -hmm. up in Rats Spirit. Spirit. Um And all the lakes have public access for boats. So if you don't have a boat slip and you do have a boat, you can access all the lakes pretty relatively easy. I mean, it gets pretty busy in the summertime, to be honest, at times. But if you show up early, you can get in pretty quick. Um, yeah, and then as far as boat slips go, I always get the question about boat slips. They're hard to come by. So if mm -hmm. you if you get on lists, um, either at the resort or different places, you can sometimes find a slip eventually. Um, some of them come up for sale. They're pretty they're pretty hard to get a hold of. Um, but yeah, I mean, lake life here is is awesome. Certain Do you have a favorite lake? I would say as far as boating activities, I think Hayden Lake. Is probably mm -hmm. my favorite it's not as rough not as busy not as busy um Coeur d'Alene I mean it's just it's amazing and mm -hmm. going down the river too mm -hmm. just checking out houses honestly mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. we're, it's, it's yeah, grown. we're real estate junkies yeah. so you just <laughs> troll the troll the shores and look at the houses and they're not small lakes you know no. Pend Oreille mm -hmm. is big enough to where they actually do submarine dives on the southern all the way down in a baby yeah. Yeah. yeah down in a baby so crazy. they're uh they're not little ponds no <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, and I, I get the question too. A lot of times on the surrounding smaller lakes like Hauser, Twin, and Spirit, like are they motorized boats? And yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, people <clears throat> wake surf on those lakes, ski, mm -hmm. um, bit great fishing lakes. Um, mm -hmm. So we have a lot of that, and it all ties it all ties together in the, that lake life. Yep. Yeah. All right. What are we on? Five. Number five. All right. Halfway. Halfway park. Yeah, so knock on wood for this one, but uh, typically <laughs> we don't have very uh, extreme or natural disasters that occur often. Um, we're kind of in a pocket where 
you know, I mean, we've, I've never really experienced a, an earthquake uh, or tornado. I mean, definitely not a hurricane, uh, anything <laughs> no, like no that. No tsunamis hitting. No tsunamis hitting the coast of Idaho. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, we, we do experience some wind. We're, we're close to the prairie, and so, you know, every once in a while we'll get some, some wind hitting our way. But for the most part, it's a, you know, environmentally, it's a pretty safe and clean place to be, um, which yeah. is nice. I mean, I know that there's pockets everywhere that, you know, have high density of uh, earthquakes or, you know, a lot of coastal regions and hurricanes and everything like that. So we're kind of just in a little bubble up here to where... Uh, fairly protected in that area yeah that's definitely a definitely a positive mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. yeah the only really thing ice storm we've had a couple ice storms and when like you said wind but nothing crazy yeah i mean 1996 or it was the ice storm right? I remember that. and ice storm 96 <laughs> and uh you know and that was we had a lot of snow and it, and it froze and we kind of lost some electricity but i mean ever since then i haven't experienced anything like that so yeah if you're really worried about it you can get a uh what do you call those things generator, generator. generator. Yeah, one of, those, one of those things. <laughs> one of those things. All right, number six, and you know this is maybe my my number one personally is just the the public parks in our area, Post Falls, Coeur d'Alene, Coeur d'Alene especially. Just the Parks and Rec Department, I think, is probably it's got to be one of the best yeah. in the country. I think I notice it when when I travel to other areas. I think people notice it as they just drive into Coeur d'Alene. It's just how green and well maintained everything is and there's just a lot of them so mm -hmm. downtown McEwen Park is a huge asset it's at the base of Tubbs Hill which is an amazing um, area in it of itself I guess you can consider that a park as well <coughs> because it has a two-mile trail all the way around it you just beautiful beautiful picturesque views of the lake all the way around and rocks you can jump off of we did you know all throughout my childhood <laughs> um, but uh, in McEwen you got um, you know, pickleball courts, basketball courts, dog parks, area, big grassy areas for concerts. Um, and then even our, just our old city park, you got the, one of the really cool things is the new Atlas waterfront project that we've done a couple highlight videos on. The city was able to um, retain over 2000 feet of river frontage. That's public access to the community. So it's like a river walk. There's a dog park on the water so the dogs can jump in the river. Um, it's pretty unique that we're able to kind of hold a lot of these cool, unique features and assets public so we can all enjoy them. Um, and the, the maintenance of them is just crazy. I mean, it's just all, always beautifully well kept and that's something that people always note to me is just like, wow, we just, everything's green, there's no garbage, people take care of it and mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty cool. What are we on? Seven? Seven. Sounds right. Number seven for me is going to be small town feel. So I've lived in Coeur d'Alene my whole life and it's changed a lot in that time. But one thing that really hasn't changed much is that everyone is pretty friendly. And I think it catches people by surprise <laughs> sometimes when they're not used to it. They're not, they're not expecting, you know, if your car breaks down and I can attest on both sides of this, both that I've pulled over and that I've had someone help me because, you know, maybe yeah. I, whatever happens, um, ran the gas gauge too low when I was a teenager or whatever. Um, no, I'm so, I'm never but, <laughs> but I mean, people jump in to help their neighbors. You see neighbors shoveling each other's driveways. You see, you know, you're driving down a rural road and everybody waves at you mm -hmm. and you don't even necessarily realize that that's not normal unless you go somewhere in you know a larger city and that's not normal there yeah. um but it it's comforting and it's it's just a way of life here mm -hmm. and um i'm glad that we haven't lost that yeah because that's pretty central to why you know this is a good place to raise a family well and i think too it. on that uh topic a lot of people that are moving here want that and then once yeah. they they get here they they're like wow this is really cool so that's why it hasn't changed too much is because the people have really you know uh just kind of adapted to that and love mm -hmm. it love that feel yeah yeah prime example as we we're prepping for this video who did you see down at the coffee shop below our office <laughs> my fourth grade teacher yeah so uh, <laughs> you just you see people that you know all the time and like when your kids are on sports uh -huh. teams it's just everybody knows everybody, everybody knows everyone and <laughs> And it's and the guy behind the counter is also a friend of mine's son. So you know, it's like <laughs> I'm 
it's just how it works. It's mm-hmm. how it how it is. But cool. it's it's there's something comforting about that, mm-hmm. you know, where mm-hmm. I just had a silly experience where I there was a package that was lost and I had to call the post office and within like twelve hours two postmasters from one from Wallace and one from somewhere else called me like on the phone <laughs> i was like and they were so nice mm-hmm. i was just like yeah. blown away but it was these rural north idaho post office right employees that were like really concerned about this one packet i don't mm-hmm. know it was just not what you'd get right. if you called ups corporate or super, something super cool yeah yeah <laughs> cool eight all right number eight um so obviously with the growth we've had and from a lot of people wanting to move to our area we are and this, I know this is kind of a nationwide thing, but we're, we're in need of jobs, really. Um, especially, I think our number one and what I kind of hear, and I think you guys could probably agree, is like our construction field. Um, all, of, all of the areas, so plumbing, electricians, carpenters, um, roofers, I mean, any, anything, framers, um, they're in high demand right now. And we need them, we need qualified people um, to build homes, because we need homes, yep. <laughs> big time. Um, yeah, if you're in the trades, that's definitely a reason mm-hmm. you should yeah, move to North Idaho. For sure. You will not be unemployed. Not at <laughs> healthcare. all. Not at all. Yeah, health. Yeah, so healthcare, that's another one. We're, we're shorthanded healthcare wise, pretty much across the board. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, like our local, so police departments, fire departments, they're all hiring right now. Um, we've just seen so much growth mm-hmm. um, that we need, we need jobs yep. um, and qualified people. So, sounds good. Number nine. And that's you. Oh, it goes to me. Done. Okay. Well, mine is proximity to other cool areas in the Pacific Northwest. So I think one of the cool little factors about Coeur d'Alene and Post Falls is that you you sit on I ninety, which you know is the interstate that goes from Seattle to Boston, um, and so it's really easy access to get to some other areas that are just as unique and awesome as as North Idaho. So you can be you know, over to Missoula fairly quickly in Montana, you can go up to Glacier National Park, which is just an unbelievable national park um, in what, four hours four, from here? Four and a half. Uh, you can head up north. Uh, we have, uh, you know, Highway 95, so we kind of splits splits up north south, and you can get to Canada fairly quickly. We, uh, my family often will jaunt up to Nelson, BC. Mm-hmm. It's a really cool place, whitewater ski resorts up there. And that's a real quick drive. Mm-hmm. Spokane is, is a close, you know, bigger metro. So uh, we've talked about that before in terms of an international airport. Um, there's a really, a lot of cool pockets in Spokane, great restaurant, um, entertainment over there, uh, restaurants and entertainment. Uh, then also you can get over to Seattle in four and a half hours. So, you know, in the, mm-hmm. in the summer, uh, we'll hop over there uh, for a couple baseball games, a couple Mariner games, um, do the tourist thing and pop right back. Uh, it's an easy weekend trip. So the fact that you're situated you know, on I-90 and have access to other amazing areas, I mean, even going down to Moscow, like the Palouse is beautiful, um, the university's down there. Um, mm-hmm. That's one of the things, proximity, you're close to a lot of cool things in the inland, inland Northwest. So, so that's number nine, and I guess number ten. Uh, we got to do number ten because we already said it. Camping, camping, yeah. Let's do camping. So that's huge. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say we have a Costco, but we'll do oh. camping. <laughs> that, yeah, that's we it. also have a Costco. That's probably number one. <laughs> that's a bonus. Uh, yeah, bonus one, on number eleven. So kind of going hand in hand with like the lake life in the summer. Another great thing to do in North Idaho is to go camping. We have tons of awesome places to camp if you want to camp at a park or there's lots of places you can just go and just you know pitch your tent and Mm -hmm. do your thing and you know if you don't need hookups um the older i get the more i appreciate having a travel trailer with a bathroom (laughs) so i tend to go more towards the parks but um my family really likes to go to priest lake in the Mm -hmm. summer there are some amazing um places to camp right around priest lake um beside just priest lake state park but, um, you know, if you have two vehicles, you bring your boat and Priest, oh, it's just like probably yeah. my favorite lake if I had to pick one. Yeah, um, we didn't even hit Priest Lake. Mm-hmm. It's just, yeah. But it's, a little, it's yeah. a little further north, but yeah. But Crystal it is something water. about mm-hmm. Priest Lake is just absolutely yeah. magical. So, um, but right, really close to this area is Farragut State Park. And that's actually 
on Lake Ponderé on the southern tip, and um, you can camp there. There's tons of places to hike mm -hmm. and explore. Um, there are places to um, just go and, and drop your boat in the water, or if you just want to swim, there's a cute little swimming beach inlet oh, yeah. area that's yeah. super protected the and cove, yeah, yeah um, a little bit warmer than the rest of the and, lake. And schools close to Silverwood too. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. Um, so I think um, you know it's a great place to get outside, basically yeah. with your family, all four seasons. Whether you're mm -hmm. skiing in the winter, boating, camping, hiking, fishing, yeah, hunting. Yeah. I mean, there's just so much to do um, outside here. Yeah, all and, four seasons. And your spots, priests, like. There's different types of camping like there's that's mm -hmm. the lake life camping and then my mm -hmm. family we always go on the, up the Coeur d'Alene River or the St. Joe so we camp up in those spots and float the river and and uh, you can't go wrong either of the, yeah. with any of the options mm -hmm. so yeah and just touching on like land I mean going back to that too I mean hunting in, in Idaho is another thing mm -hmm. I think a lot of people come to this area for I mean Montana Idaho you know there's more national forest acreage than any other state so you are you're pretty much able to access the outdoors from anywhere you go in Idaho which is pretty awesome um, yeah and you can buy tags over the counter which I know in some states that's mm -hmm. you can't even do that so wide variety of wildlife yeah deer yep. moose elk bear yeah a little bit of everything mm -hmm. yeah yep. Awesome. So yeah, I mean, those are, those are our top 10 reasons. Maybe you should move to Idaho if you're really into, into the same the stuff that we are. That's just our personal preferences of what we love to do. Wanted to share that with you. And if you have any questions about any of these specific topics, obviously we're locals here. We born and raised, um, and know the area and you know, we love it. So we love to share that with you, uh, in terms of moving here, we, we got your back with all different types of neighborhoods, whether you want to live on acreage, if you're into downtown living, into the you know planned neighborhoods. We really have to have that consultation with you to see what's really important to you and what your priorities are. But we have so many different varieties of housing and, and styles of living that I'm sure something will fit what you need. So, but we can't help you unless you reach out. So you got to call us, text us, email us, however you got to get a hold of us, reach out because we're super happy to help you. So until the next video, we'll see you later.